Today is November 10th, 82nd anniversary of Kristallnacht, which occurred in 1938 on November 9th and 10th. Over a thousand synagogues were torched and burnt. The night of broken glass, a synagogue windows were shattered and over 10,000 businesses were ransacked and destroyed in Berlin and over 30,000 people were rounded up and sent to the concentration camps. This was the beginning of the greatest tragedy in Jewish and human history, the Shoah, the Holocaust, which led to the murder of six million innocent Jews and a million and a half children. The March of the Living uh, created an initiative to commemorate this day, especially during the COVID period that we're in. And it's called the Let There Be Light initiative, asking that all synagogues around the world leave their lights on for the evenings of the night of November 9th and 10th to commemorate the Holocaust and to combat darkness with creating more light. And indeed, this year, for the very first time, the one and only synagogue in the Muslim country of Bahrain, which is in its capital of Manama, left its lights open last night as a show of solidarity with the Jewish people in fighting anti-Semitism, which tragically still continues until this very day. And the officials of the king of Bahrain said that he hopes that now with the new peace accords, more Jews and more Israelis will be coming to Bahrain and the synagogue, which has not been opened since 1948 and opened up yesterday and left its lights on to commemorate the tragedies of the Holocaust, will now welcome visitors from all over the world as the synagogue will come back to life again. This is a glimmer of hope, of light, of a potential new path for peace in the Middle East. And for this, we are grateful. You know, our rabbis tell us, Ner Hashem Nishmat Adam, that King Solomon says the candle of God is the soul of man. Let there be light is not just about the physical light of our synagogues, but more importantly, the spiritual light that emanates from the synagogue and from each and every one of our souls. And why is a flame compared to a soul? The obvious answer our rabbis say is because everything in this world follows the rules of gravity pulling downward, but a flame is always flickering and dancing to go heavenward. The body of man desires physical pleasure and materialistic things, but the soul is always striving and yearning for greater spiritual heights. But more specifically, it's explained in Kabbalah that if you look at a flame, if you look at a candle, you'll see there are three parts. The first part is the blackish, bluish part, which is closest to the wick. And then you see the yellow part, which is around the blackish, bluish part. And then there is the light and the aura that radiates from the yellow flame, the light of the candle. And our rabbis say that specifically every human being has three souls, not one. There is the animal soul, known as the nefesh habahamit. There is the intellectual soul, which is known as the nefesh hasichlit. And then there's the godly soul, which is known as the nefesh halokit. The blackish, bluish part around the wick, that part of the flame represents the animalistic soul, which is no different than an animal. It desires to stay alive, to physically eat and sleep and sustain itself it's the physical vitality of the body. Then there's the yellow part, which is the intellectual soul, which defines a human being and makes us homo sapiens, that we have intellect, we could reason, we could use logic, we could use understanding in our decisions unlike an animal. That is the yellow part of the flame. But ultimately, the godly soul is the spiritual light that radiates from the soul of our neshama, the yellow flame that dances and radiates light and creates an aura in its surroundings. That is the light of our Torah, of our mitzvos, that our soul is able to imbue into this world. You know, Rabbi Israel may allow, Chief Rabbi of Israel, who was the, one of the youngest Holocaust survivors at the age of eight years old, he survived Buchenwald, came to Israel and became the Chief Rabbi of Israel. And every year he goes on the March of the Living. And you can see all the pictures of him marching in the front row with the tens of thousands of youth and participants from all over the world who march through Poland and go to Israel to celebrate Israel's Independence Day every year. And he always carries with him, you can see in every picture, he's always carrying a small miniature Torah. And someone asked him, why do you always carry a Torah with you on the March of the Living? And he said, I carry a Torah because the Torah, like myself, is also a survivor of the Holocaust. 
The Nazis didn't want to only destroy Jews. The Nazis wanted to destroy Judaism. They wanted to, to uproot the Torah from the world. And therefore, the way we say Am Yisrael Chai is by going on and living and thriving as a Jewish nation, defying all of our enemies and those who tried and attempted to destroy and annihilate the Jewish people. We say we will remain not just as Jews, but as observant Jews, as Jews who embrace the Torah, who follow the Torah, who live by the Torah's values. And that's why the Torah celebrates today, as it survived the greatest atrocities known to mankind, together with its beloved Jewish nation, who have embraced it, loved it, and cherished it throughout the millenniums. And today, when our synagogue lights are open around the world and radiate into the streets, it sends a message of light over darkness, of love over hatred, over goodness, of goodness over evil. It sends the message of Am Yisrael Chai, the Jewish people will always live on forever. So today, of course, you can participate by leaving the lights, not just of your synagogue, but of your home, lit up to illuminate the darkness of the world. Here in Palm Beach, it's a rainy, dark, dreary day. So the lights get to illuminate the street, not just at the nighttime, but during the daytime. But equally, or more importantly, let there be light was the first mission statement spoken by God. Let us create more light in our lives. Let us substitute hatred with love, conflict with peace, evil with goodness and kindness. And the best way to do that is do a mitzvah today in memory of the six million, in memory of those Jews who 82 years ago were attacked, their synagogues were set aflame. They were rounded up to the concentration camps. Let us do a good deed. Whatever that mitzvah you choose to do, let us do an extra good deed, a good mitzvah today. And as someone once said, that when you have an opportunity to help someone in need, do it and do it with joy because that is God answering that person's prayer through you. Have a meaningful, inspiring, uplifting day and may light prevail over darkness.